welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got a puzzle today that I think everybody apparently should be able to solve. It has one star uh, for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. Uh, it's called Zippity Doodah, and it's by GDC, uh, who is a constructor that I have massive respect for. But basically, every single GDC puzzle is a miniature masterpiece. And um, this one has been recommended to us a lot um, and apparently it sort of fits this very delicate, difficult category where you can have a supposedly, you know, an approachable puzzle that is still very interesting to solve. Um, it's the absolute sweet spot. I think it's the hardest thing to construct because making a one star puzzle without it being trivial is obviously difficult. Um, and yeah, this features also my favorite new constraint, the zipper line. Um, so these are these lines where the middle of the line, so that cell is the sum of the digits that are an equal distance away from this cell along the line. So those two digits sum to that cell, these two digits sum to that cell, these two digits sum to that cell. So very, very cool indeed. And this is what we're going to be having a go at in today's video. Um, now, I've got a few things to mention before before we do that. Firstly, let's let's mention the Kickstarter. This is our our quest to make the perfect puzzle puzzle lovers Christmas present: a fog of war narrative driven Sudoku adventure featuring fog of war puzzles, of course, fog of war Sudoku puzzles, um, mostly by Sandra and Nala very very popular constructor of that sort of puzzle especially um also because we've reached a stretch goal there's going to be one by jay dyer as well we're not that far from the next stretch goal as well um and i've been enjoying reading uh peter c hayward who's going to write the novel that accompanies these these um these sudokus has asked on on the kickstarter for people's favorite adventure stories and ah they they I was reminiscing when I read some of the answers. There was Tom Sawyer was one of them um, and uh, the famous five. And somebody mentioned Five Go to Treasure Island, which is a book I I do remember from my youth. I read the famous five books. I think there were 21, were they? 21 or 22. I read those um, sort of by torchlight. I wasn't allowed to read in bed as a child. My, my mother put, put me to bed at like, I don't know, six o'clock in the evening. So I'd be wide awake just lying there and I had to, you know, I had good eyes in those days and I would read under the bed covers for hours on end. And I used to read, well, The Secret Seven, Famous Five, uh, Enid Blyton, basically. Absolutely brilliant. So thanks, thanks for the memories um, to those of you who've been responding. And also uh, thanks to, is it Dustin, I think, who, who has uh, supported the Kickstarter to a level where uh, they will appear in the story as a character so fantastic that's you can still do that if you want to um now what else did i want to mention oh yes over on patreon uh, we have my solve of philomenon which is nearly three hours long I, I i continue to be astonished um i thought especially after i did crux by j dyer everyone would be sort of sick of very long videos but it, it appears not um so thank you if you if you've left kind comments about that uh it might appear on the channel in due course don't know um but yeah fantastic puzzle by darth paradox and also demono's sudoku hunt which is our november reward if you want to be in with a chance of winning the competition just two days left before the 20th in order to get your answers in and we're going to stream again chance of sonar tuesday night 10 o'clock uk time and that is all the news apart from I need to say a very happy birthday to Vicky from your husband, Philip. Uh, I think your husband of 26 years, if I'm not mistaken, Vicky. And apparently Philip hasn't missed a video in two years. That's fantastic. Thank you for watching so often, Philip. And, and Vicky puts up with you shouting at Mark and me when we make uh, either errors or we, we don't see something. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, I think you're in Seattle for Vicky's birthday with your youngest daughter. So I hope you have a brilliant day. And there's lots of chocolate cake in store um, with the correct ratio, of course, of icing to cake. One, two, one. Now that's said and done. Let's have a look at Zippity Doodah. Where does that come from? Is that a song? Zippity Doodah. I want to say Zippity Doodah, Zippity Day. 
I don't know, I should. I feel like I should know that, um, but I don't. Um, anyway, let's have a look at what GDC has in store. These are the rules. So we've got normal Sudoku rules applied. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Digits that equal distance from the center of a lavender zipper line must sum to the digit in the middle of that line. So we've already talked about that. So if we, if we label that with a color, those two squares, they're obviously just one cell away, aren't they? So those two, these two, and let's give those purple. So the purples add up to green, the blues add up to green, and the oranges add up to green. That's how zipper lines work. Um, and digit oh yeah okay so we've got diagonals as well digits on the mark diagonals may not repeat so we need to have the digits one to nine once each on this diagonal and also on this diagonal do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking now one thing i'm going to do here actually which um i think i did in another zipper line puzzle so i'm going to mark the centers oh hang on let's pick a better color than that let's mark the centers of the zipper lines so there there that, i think it's that one how long is this one two three it's that one isn't it two, three. so it's that that one there and presumably that one yes okay so those are the centers of the lines and I can immediately see something about this one, which actually the logic I've seen about this one must also apply to this one. So the logic I'm seeing here is that there are six cells that are not um, not the center. So even if we filled those six cells with the lowest digits we could, which would be one, two, three, four, five, and six, that's telling us that this center must be at least seven um, because we simply can't put uh lower digits than than uh, well the minimum digit we could have in those six cells is obviously six and that six plus something is more than six um so the same logic applies there but and the same logic applies there right okay so this this feels like a start because now i've got a seven eight nine triple on this diagonal now can we do the same thing Mm, not quite, I don't think. What's that digit? So that, well, it's at least five. <laughs> I can tell you that it's at least five. Let's do a good lift, a good lift in the corner and properly pencil mark that. Um, I don't think it can be five. I'm just trying to justify that in my brain. Which I can't now do. One, four, two, three... Hmm, no, you could still have a 1-4 pair there or a 2-3 pair. Okay, I can't rule out 5. That's That surprises me. This one, they've got just very slightly different properties, haven't they? The, these, the, the, the zipper line in box 1 and the zipper line in box 9, because they stick out of their box very slightly. I mean, this one has to be at least 6, because again, I can't put 5 on this line, because there must be at least the lowest five digits I could put on the zipper line in the box are one, two, three, four, and five. So that's at least six. So this one is slightly more restricted than this one. But if that was six, how would we do that? That would have to be three, wouldn't it? Yeah, if that's six, these would have to be one, two, three, four, and five. And we obviously couldn't have three opposite three within the box because if we say put three here those would both be three and that would break the rules of sudoku if these were both three that would break the rules of sudoku but you could have threes there right okay so i'm not quite the ah ah now there was another trick about zipper lines i remember from when i've done them before which was that you can never put nine yeah okay you can never put nine on a, on on the tail ends of zipper lines because if you do nine plus anything is going to break the middle of the line therefore nine in the middle box look has to be on the diagonal there we go there's a deduction of some worth so that means nine can't now go in the centers of these corner cells 
Now, can we improve on that? Nine in box one has to be in one of four cells. That's not very clever. Well, uh, what about box three, though? Nine in box three. Ah, that can't be nine because of the seven, eight, nine on the diagonal. Right, so nine in box three is in one of these two cells, which means nine in box one is... Now, I feel, I feel pencil markable now because it's only in three cells rather than four. What about this one? Nine is in one of three again. And this one. Oh, oh, bobbins. <laughs> okay, I didn't see that. Where's nine in this box? In fact, in fact, better than that. It's, it's much better than even no. Yeah, I mean, nine you can see from the zipper line is on the diagonal. But those two, these two squares can't be nine. If we put nine in either of these two squares, my seven, eight, nine triple along the diagonal is very much broken. So nine goes in the corner. Right, there's a deduction. Okay, so nine is not now in this square. So this is also not nine. So now, ah, so that's nine. That's nine in box three. That's not nine. And, okay. Hmm. By the secret, I know those two squares add up to nine. Yes, okay, so let, let me explain that deduction. If you've never watched Cracking the Cryptic before, that might be a mysterious deduction. If you have, you're almost certainly aware of the secret, which is something I share with my very favourite people. Basically, that's friends, family and people who watch the channel. So, okay, why do I know these two squares add up to nine? Well, it's because... Every row, every column, and every 3x3 three three box of a Sudoku, by the time the Sudoku is finished, will contain the digits 1 to 9 once each because of the rules of Sudoku. And if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So I know that those 9 cells add up to 45. But I also know, because these two squares add up to 9 by zipper line logic, those two squares add up to 9, and those two squares add up to 9, that this zipper line is effectively 4 lots of 9. It's the 9 in the middle and then three pairs that each add up to nine. So those squares must add up to four times nine, 36, which means these two squares must add up to nine. So that's how I knew that. Um, but, uh, I don't actually know if that is of any use. Eighteen. You see, it depends what this is, doesn't it? Oh. Ah, hang on. Oh, hang on. I can work out what that digit is now using that logic, can't I? Boom, 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 boom. Yes. So this, right. Okay. So this, the zipper line in this box either is four times seven or four times eight collectively. Now if it's 4 times 7, that's 28, plus 9 is 37, that puts <laughs> that puts 8 in the corner, and it can't be 8 in the corner because of the 7-8 pair, that's beautiful, very simple, but it's just a little mathematical trick using the zipper line. So this, can't, this, this simply cannot be 7, because it would require 8 in the corner, so that's 8, that's 7, and now we can, we can still do the maths here, so we've now got 30... Oh, hang on, have I messed up? No, 32, that's fine, isn't it? Four in the corner. I think that, I'm just going to check that again. So four times eight for the zipper line is 32, plus nine is 41, plus four gives us the 45 for the box. So we get four in the corner. Yeah, which we, actually, the other way of seeing that is to think about pairs that add up to eight. The, the three pairs that add up to eight using different Sudoku digits are one, seven, two, six, and three, five. So once we realize those are on the line, we could have done that without maths um, or without such such high maths, I suppose. <laughs> um, right, so now eight can't be on the zipper line in box five, can it? We've got an eight, nine pair, which takes eight out of the corners. Oh, so, well, hang on, seven why do I take the 8 out and not take the 7 out of the corners? My brain is bizarre. But this is weird. Because now that big 7 is going to make that 6. And that is 5 on this in this corner. Which is very much not what I thought was going to happen. Well, okay, but we've done the thinking here. We said if this was 6, this has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the 3 
cannot be opposite another three. So the three goes here, not in the corner of the puzzle. So that's a three. Um, can we do better than that? I mean, I know these are one, two, four, and five, and I know the one and the five and the two and the four are opposite each other. I know that's not four, so I know that one's not two. That one's not five, look, by the diagonal. Uh, if that's not five, that one is not one. Mm, not sure. Not sure whether we can keep that going. Now, what about... Ah, this is a three, six pair. Check out, we said these two added up to nine. Well, look, they're not one, eight, two, seven, or four, five now. So the only thing left is three, six. So that's three. That's six. Um, and I need one, two. Well, okay, the only digits I've got left to place on this diagonal are one, two, and five. And it looks like those two are opposite one another on the, on this zipper line. So they must be two and five, which is the only only ones of those selection that can add up to seven. So that's a one. Now one must be opposite. Hang on, which one is it? That one. It's very easy, I think, to get these wrong, these zipper lines, by putting the pairs in the wrong positions. But I think those are in the, the right place. That's not one. Ah, that's not one. So this is two or four. And two or four on a zipper line adding, adding up to six must be opposite the other of two and four. So this is a two, four pair. And this must be a 1-5 pair. But I don't... Th oh, we do know the order. 1 there. So that's 1, that's 5. Right. So now 5 in this box is in one of those two squares, which means 3... Yeah, so 3 goes... That's a strange way of thinking about that. So 5 goes in one of those, which puts 3 on sort of the other sides of the points of a cross there. I don't think that's doing very much, but it's just a bit strange. Uh, what about down here, though? We've not put in 7, 8, and 9. So 8 has to be in one of those two squares. Is that useful? Maybe. Oh, what about... Hang on, where's 5 in box 7? It's on a tip, look. It's on the tip of the zipper line, which adds up to 9. So that's a 4, 5 pair. Um, okay, what we probably need to do now is to think about this line, because those have to be a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple. There's no 1 in... Ah, right, there's no 1 in these squares. That means there's no 4 in these squares. These must be a 2, 3 pair, and these are a 1, 4 pair. And there's a 3 down here, so that's 3, that's 2. We're not going to have any 3s in the corner today, I'm afraid. Um, now, what's that done? Anything? Three? Mm, I don't think it has. Three is in one of those positions. These two squares are also, obviously, they're summing to five, so they're either one, four, or two, three. That's not three, so that's not two. Can't quite see how to do that. Um... What have we got here? We've got threes, fives, and two, uh, twos and sixes. Right, so hang... Oh, okay, so where's two in this box? Two is in the same cells that three's in. So this is a five, six pair. And that two is looking down here, so that drops off down here. Four and two go in. There's a four there, so on the diagonal, that becomes a one. I think I've neglected this diagonal somehow. This is a one or a two, so this is a high digit. That is three or four to add up to five and make the correct total. Now, I feel like I feel I'm undercooked in this box. I must be able to resolve this pattern. How do I do that? There's a two down here now by Sudoku. Seven is in right. OK, so seven and eight are a pair here, which means that must be nine. So this is a seven, eight pair. The 9 is in one of those squares. Can we do the 9 in the middle box yet? Or the 8? That would, either way round, that will resolve things. 1, 4, 5, 6 in this column. Ah, not quite. Um, it's probably... 
Ah, this four is doing some work, so that's four and that's five. So four is in one of those squares. Two is on this vertical strut in this box. So seven must be on the horizontal strut. And can we do, can we keep doing that? One is not in those positions in box number seven. So one is in one of those and that must be opposite eight. That means eight is either here or here. Nearly. And what, so what's the, that's it, isn't it? Oh, oh look, right. Yeah, so because we've only got four digits left to place, what we could do here is change this to central notation because in effect what we've done is allocate every digit to, to its two possible positions within the box. But there we get a one, two pair in column one and that means that must be eight, which means eight is opposite one to add up to nine, which means two is opposite seven, which means this is one, which means this is four. Now those squares have got to be a seven, six pair. Ah, whoa, we're going full color mode, but there's a seven in the middle of the grid. So that's seven and that's six. Uh, so seven is in one of those two cells. Six is in one of these two squares. Have I, I've sort of done the diagonals, but I still can't do. Ah, okay, six, where's six in the middle box now? And six isn't on these two legs, is it? So six is six is on a tip. So it must be one plus six on the tip and this one can't be one. So that's one, that's six. And this must be a three, four pair. And therefore this square is three. It's lovely, isn't it? It's just, it's really lovely. And three can't be here. So that's three, that's seven. And from that we can deduce the following. Come on brain, deduce something. There's a two there by Sudoku. So these are five, eight, nine. Five, eight, nine. And that's shifting nine out of this square. And put it, oh, we're putting seven. Where do we put seven in column two? It's got to go there. So seven, six. And this is an eight, nine pair. So we haven't got the eight, nine pair in box one. And we've not got the eight, nine pair in box five. That's a naked single, is it? It feels like I need two, five, eight, and nine. So I think that has to be a five. And that resolves some of the middle box at least. Just you un unzipping my zipper line. <laughs> uh, that's five, right? So that's gonna do something up here. That's five, that's six, that's two, that's three. Uh, that's seven, so that's seven, that's eight. These squares are a two eight pair and yes, okay, that two. So that's two, that's eight. Where's five in this row? It's got to be there. And there's now an eight nine pair in this row. So this is a four six pair, which we can fill in. Ah, we could if I press the space bar in the correct number of times, that's one, that's nine. Where, where is this? Oh, three here. So that's three, that's four. So that's three by Sudoku. It's, got, it's probably all gonna be this, this tiny little zipper line to finish off, isn't it? Um, probably, what are those squares? <laughs> They're five and six, which we can do. So five goes there, six goes there, six goes here. What about those? Uh, eight and four not resolved apparently that's strange and these squares are two and five no they're not the two and seven which is resolved so seven goes here two goes here two goes there the minimum value of those squares now is well let's just think about this what could we do in fact, where's one in this box is quite a sensible question. One has to be, can't be the sum, so that must be one. Which means these two are consecutive digits, doesn't it? Because this one is adding to one to give this one. And if these are consecutive, we could think about which, 
what's the odd digit that must be in this consecutive pair and we can't put one we can't put three we can't put five into either cell and you can't put seven so there is a nine on here and that must therefore be in the top cell <laughs> There's probably an easy way of doing that, but that's rather pretty. Uh, so that's eight, that's four. Uh, this column now needs a something. Uh, what is it? A five, I think. How can we? Oh, the eight and the nine are finally resolved in the middle box. And we've got four and seven, which must be in that order. And then we need nine down here, and we're left with a one. What a lovely puzzle. Let's see if it's right. Yay! 700 people have solved that in 20 days well that's i mean it's not a surprise based off the quality of the puzzle that is fabulous gdc again every puzzle of gdc's is just a total pleasure i hope you had a go i hope you were convinced by the one star rating and you had a go because that was gorgeous um let me know in the comments how you got on i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic